No, you've been a good friend And that's in the thick and thin And I know it's never gonna end Cause you've been a good friend Hi, welcome back to my channel, Courting Tech Hat. If you're new here, please introduce yourself in the comments below. If you're returning, just say hi. If you would like to get more Dollar Tree DIYs, um, thrift store product upcycles or hauls from yard sales, things like that, please consider subscribing. I upload at least two times a week and it's free. If you hit that bell button, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please hit that like button if you like this video and find it helpful in any way. It helps my channel grow as well as lets me know what kind of videos you want more of. So what are we going to be making today? Okay, so today we're going to be making these DIY box frames. I got most of my products from the Dollar Tree and they're very rustic and I love them. I love how they look in my entryway and they make really cool decor pieces. You can either hang them up or leave them on a table. If you want to learn how to make it, stay tuned. If you want to know what supplies I've used, please check out the description box below. And if you have any questions, ask me in the comments. I do read everyone's comments and I enjoy getting them, so keep them coming. So if you want to see how I made this DIY, stay tuned. So let's look at what we need for this first project. So you're going to need these four white box frames from the Dollar Tree. Look at the heart. If you cannot find them in white, you can get any color um, and just paint them white. So I am pulling it out with my fingers or you could just get a little screwdriver under there and pry it out. All right, so now you need the shelf liners from Dollar Tree. Make sure you get the ones that are like the vinyl ones that are kind of bumpy. Um, and I love this one with the twall on it. All right, so I'm showing you that's the, bot, the back of another one. So I am cutting the shelf liner to size um, with my rotary cutter. And it worked like a charm. Okay, so I realized that's too big. I should have cut it to a smaller scale, so I just moved down my square. This is my Elmer spray adhesive, which is really strong, um, and I just lightly spray um, the back of it, put it in, and it's okay if your um, inside shows a little bit because we're going to be covering that up. All right, so I'm pushing it in, and I do all four like this. So I just lightly spray the back and believe me, you don't need much. It's very strong, that glue. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I did all different. Now I'm taking my sanding block, I'm putting it inside just to help push it all down. And now I'm taking my Deco Art uh, stain. It's in charcoal, um, kind of like a grayish to match the flowers that are on the shelf liner. So I'm shaking it up and I stir it a bit, and then I'm putting that gray stain right on my popsicle stick. So you can get right from the Dollar Tree. So I'm stirring it up. Oh, I got that um, deco stain from Joann's in the clearance section. Now I'm taking one of these placemats. It's the Blessed placemat. They're hard. I liked that it had that grayish color, and right now I'm cutting little triangles and to put in the corner. So when you put in your um, popsicle sticks, it's going to, you see how one edge hits the side, the other edge will hit the side. I realized I did not make them exactly how they needed to fit in the corner. So I used my Dollar Tree square and I made sure they were lined up on both points and I made a perfect triangle to fit in that corner. I needed at a 90 degree angle. So that's what I was doing there. If you don't care about that, then just cut a little triangle. So I put them in each of the four corners. So you're going to need 16 popsicle sticks and four, 16 um, corners. So now I'm using my uh, sponge sanding brush, whatever, from the Dollar Tree. Notice I moved to the medium grit because the uh, light grit was way too light. It wasn't roughing up how I wanted it to. So I loved how it's starting to look really rustic and I realized I want more than that than what the sanding block was taking off. 
Um, so now, right now, I'm getting my greenery ready. This is my garland that I got from Hobby Lobby, and it's a boxwood, and it just lasts forever. I'm also using my Dollar Tree um, flowers. It's hot bush, and I'm cutting off the bottom of the boxwood and getting my strings ready. So I'm using three pieces of boxwood and one piece of the hot bush. So right now I'm putting a little bit of hot glue on that twine. Again, you can get your twine from the Dollar Tree. I am wrapping it around. Notice I leave one piece out. That's to help me tie, make my tie. I wrap it around the bottom a few times. And now I'm going to tie it into a bow. Okay, so I'm going to put a little hot glue on the back of that twine because that will hold it in place the best. I put it inside the box and then I take a little glue and kind of like situate it where I want the boxwoods to be. So I'm kind of manipulating it with the glue. Now I realize I did not think it was rustic enough, farmhouse enough. So I'm taking that gray stain again and I'm going right on top of that wood. Now you can stop here. You do not need to make it more than this. Um, but I wanted it more rustic. So I even went in with some more stain because I wanted more gray to show up. Whatever suits your decor. The mineral would have looked nice on this too if you didn't want it as dark as the gray stain. The mineral Waverly paint, chalk paint, I love that stuff. Make sure you get the insides. And now I'm taking my Fix All Adhesive, which is like an E6000. I get it from the Dollar Tree. I pierce the top and I get ready to put them together, all of the box frames. Again, you don't have to do a line. You could do a square um, and kind of set it up like that. These uh, little clips are from the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm using them to hold my pieces together while they dry. So I use my fix all adhesive for the long haul and my hot glue so it will kind of hold in place immediately. Okay, so I glue all four together. Now I'm taking my burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I cut out a piece long enough to make a bow just the regular way you would tie your shoes um, with some tails okay so I am straightening it out I have a little piece left over um, after I tighten this I'm going to fold in thirds and wrap it around the middle I'm gonna put a little hot glue on the back push up that piece and then I'm going to cut that, the bottom part, and now I'm going to cut the top part, and I will finish gluing the piece you wrap around the middle. And there you go. Watch your fingers. It is mesh, so the burlap, it, the hot glue goes right through it, so just be careful. Okay, so this is what it looks like, and I want to add some greenery and some flowers to the actual bow part. So I glue it on to the corner. Again, you can put it on the middle. I pick the corner and I'm sort of like billowing out the tails of the bow. I glue it down to get that bill. Oh, goodness gracious. And now I'm going to take that boxwood and I'm going to put a little hot glue on just to keep it in place. And I'm going to put it inside of that bow. I take these wildflowers from the Dollar Tree. I liked the colors of it and I liked how small they were. I just take one and I put hot glue on the back and I'm going to glue it right near that boxwood. And I'll take another one and do the same thing. Okay, so now I have my flowers and boxwood greenery coming out from the bow. Now the inside had like this weird yellow look and I didn't like it. So I took my paint pen, um, my Sharpie paint pen. It's like a metallic gold and I just kind of covered that up just a little bit. I realized I f the my bow um, ends were too long, so I am cutting those up. The tails were just like kind of hanging off the side a little too much.
Okay, so this is what it looks like. I love how this turned out. Again, you can make it in a foursome and hang it on the wall or do whatever you want. Next, bonus DIY, box frame succulent. All right, so I'm taking the two black box frames from the Dollar Tree and I'm popping out the back. I save these because you never know when you're going to need something like this. So I just pop it out with my fingers. It really was easy. I picked off the most of the back as I could, but this was some of um, the glue that was sticking there. So I just take a black Sharpie so you won't notice it. And I just go over that glue slash paper that's stuck on the back. I take my Waverly chalk paint in white. Oh, these are the little pots that come with the succulents from the Dollar Tree, and I'm sure some of you have them laying around. So I take these, I clean them up, I'm wiping them off to make sure there's no wet residue on them, and I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white, and I'm going to cover both of those with that. I end up actually doing two coats. So I'll do one coat, let them dry for a little bit, and then I went back and to do my second coat. This was a little trick I was doing because my hands were getting dirty and I didn't want them to. So I just put in a little skewer to hold it in place while I, you know, painted the outside. All right, so now I'm taking the Waverly Chalk Paint in White again, and I am going over the black box frame to give it more of that weathered look. I love how that looks. I'm taking my E6000, or you could take your fix-all glue, whatever you have on hand. I just wanted to finish this up. So I'm taking that, and I am, you know, just putting a straight line across so it stays in place permanently. And I'm going to take a little hot glue so it just holds in place for now. And I can finish my project. And there we go. So I'm going to, this one I actually planned on hanging up. So I'm trying to look where that um, back hook is. There we go. And I wanted that to be on the top so I can hook it up. I end up putting, now I'm going to hold these together a little bit and put my clamps on. I end up putting a rope on the top so you can either hang it from the rope or the actual hook. So these are picks from the dollar zone at Target. Um, I liked how small these were. I thought they were a good fit, but they have many from the Dollar Tree. I had these and I wanted to use them up, but use whatever you have. All right, so now I'm cutting my floral foam to have it fit in each of those small pots. I put a little hot glue on it to hold it in place and they're ready to go. Um, I'm cutting off the bottom of the picks. I put them in to see where I want them, but I end up taking them out because I want to put in my moss. So that's how they'll look. This is my Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. Um, I leave mine in a bucket. It just keeps things cleaner. I put my hot glue on the top of the moss, uh, on top of the floral foam, I'm sorry. And then I take the Spanish moss and I put it in and I push and I press and I put it in the crevices. Um... And then what I'll do is I'm going to go back and give it a slight haircut. So it's not sticking up all over the place. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of glue at the base of the succulent so that it stays in place. I'm putting hot glue right where I'm going to place that pot. And I'm putting some fix-all glue right on the bottom of those little square pots. Now I'm pushing it a little forward and I'm using this, that little scraper you get from the Dollar Tree, just because I want to make sure I can put it against the wall if I hang it up. So I'm doing the same thing. I put on my fix all glue or your hot, your E6000, whatever. And then I put my hot glue right on the wood and you put on the little succulent make sure it's forward as much as it can be so you can put it flat against the wall okay so I'm taking my rope from the Dollar Tree again it keeps getting smaller and smaller now it's 9.5 feet all right so what I'm doing is taking off all that extra fuzz that you get on the rope with some flames just be very careful I'm making a knot on both sides and I will just use my E6000 or like I said fix all 
I'm just cutting off some extra and some hot glue. And oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like embarrassing to watch these sometimes. So I decide to be a little smart and hold it in place with some items. So I'm taking my glue. I'm putting it on one side. Now I'm going to put it on the other side. Okay, so just glue both parts on and hold in place. And that's it. You're finished with that. And here are both of my DIYs using box frames. I love how these turned out. One is more of a minimal look and the other one's more farmhouse. I love both of them. So I have them on my entryway just to stage it for you guys. If you know anyone that would want to make something like that, please share this video with them. Also, tell me which one of these DIY projects was your favorite. I think I'm going with the minimalist one, but my mother-in-law really loves the other one with the four in a row. So you let me know. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I would really appreciate it. And you'll be notified every time I upload a new video if you hit that bell icon. And if you liked what you saw, please like this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.